Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my shop. Today, we're going to do another episode of sack whittling, and today we're going to do a spinning top or a spin top or whatever you want to call it. So I've made several of these, and um, they work surprisingly well. Uh, you would think that uh, to make a good spin top, you would need a lathe, and I have a lathe, and I've made spin tops on the lathe. And they work really well. They're really well balanced, generally, and they spin a little longer. But you can whittle one surprisingly well if you do a few things and are willing to, you know, not expect it to spin for 10 minutes straight. You can make a fairly decent top. Today we're just going to whittle a simple top, but from that it's not hard to get to this kind of shape or, you know, one of these bigger ones or anything like that. So just to show you... They do spin fairly well. Some better than others. And part of that is you can kind of tinker with them a little bit. If you notice your tip isn't quite right, you can play around and maybe try to recenter the tip a little bit and that'll help maybe make it spin a little better. Um, or you can go carve another one because really it's not whole lot of investment here. Let's get started. So the first thing is you need a piece of wood. I'm going to use a full branch and it, it works out. Sometimes you have to be a little bit concerned if you're going to use a full branch that it might um, crack and check as it dries, but um, these are small enough and thin enough that generally they don't crack. I mean it might depend on the type of wood you use, but I haven't had any trouble yet. So that said, these three, four, excuse me, these four are all carved, even the big one, from um, buckthorn. And that's what I have here that I'm going to use today. I like to use buckthorn just because it's invasive, so I don't have to feel bad about cutting it down. And then I can have some green wood to use. Uh, it also works well because it has a solid pith. So if you watch the bead making video, when ash branches are small, they often have soft piths. And you don't want to use a pithy wood to make a top because you need the center to be pointy for your top to spin. So stay away from woods that are pithy. You need a solid wood with a solid core. Otherwise, you can split yourself out um, a piece of, of a log if you can only find bigger stuff to work with and you can split out something smaller to use. But I find it easier if you start with something round and then you, or at least close to round and then you just maintain that shape. The next thing to look at is you want to be fairly um, uniform and about as close to round as you can get. So if you look at this cut, you'll notice the pith, if I get something to point with, the pith is way over here and the, the growth rings are not symmetrical. They, they are thicker on this side um, and that's because this is cut out of a branch. So generally speaking, you'll get uneven growth on one side of the branch than on the more growth on one side of the branch than the other whereas if you can cut from a vertical stem you'll get a lot more centered generally speaking um, and now this isn't perfect but it's close enough that I think it'll work um, probably one of my better spinning this big guy is not perfectly round either but he's close and so those you know symmetry in the growth rings uh, is gonna make so that the wood is uniformly dense throughout at least on opposing sides, which is going to make for a better balanced top. So find yourself a branch. This one is a little bigger around than my thumb, and if we wanted to get real specific, we would say it's about, about an inch in diameter. And I think that's a pretty good size to start with. Um, doing something really big like this guy, which is more like an inch and a half, is harder to do. Uh, it just takes a lot more cuts, obviously. Uh, so, you know, start with something that's about an inch because it's pretty easy to make a pretty good top out of that. Whereas something really small like this, these are quicker to make, but they're harder to make um, work, I think. And they're also a little harder to cut when you get towards the end. So um, something that is about an inch thick works well. Um, and then you want the piece that you're working with to be long enough that you can hold on to it when you're cutting the end and things like that. And obviously we're gonna shape as much as we can before we separate it. We're not gonna use this whole length, obviously. We're gonna cut it probably in this neighborhood, make a top about that long. 
Um, but you want more to hold on to while you're working. So don't make it so short that you don't have anything to hold on to and it gets uncomfortable. Um, but also don't make it so long that you're, you know, whacking yourself with it. Just cut it shorter. I like to remove all these little branches that are going to poke me. Good. Oop, this one up here. Then it's time to take the bark off. Now you want to make sure before you get going really that you have a pretty square cut here. I got it's a little bit oblong over here, but that's okay. I'll work with it. Um, but don't don't make a really acute weird cut. Uh, try to make it as flush across as you can with your saw before you get ready to start because it'll help you keep things circular. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the bark because I don't expect this to stay. You could try leaving some of the bark on on a section of the top and see if it sticks, but generally as it dries, it's going to fall off. So I take it off now so that I can see what I'm working with. So you can see this is really wet. You can see the, the wetness in the, the layer here as I take that off. So um, that makes it easier to cut, I think. But it also means that your cuts aren't as clean generally. So sometimes uh, it's nice to start with green wood and then finish once it's a little bit more dry. But we'll see what we can do here. Now we're getting through that outer layer and we're getting into some real, real wood here. Now one of the struggles with using buckthorn is there's lots of little branches and knobs uh, which make it a little bit harder to work with. So if you can find a piece of wood that's got a nice clean section with no branches in it, um, it'll, it'll be a little easier to do. The next thing to do is to start making your point. And so the best way to do this is just rotate as you cut. So think about how far back you're gonna start now if you want the tip of your top, so like if we look at this one, if you want the tip of your top to be starting at about here and you're going to taper, kind of like this one does, you're going to start about here and then taper to a tip. Don't start cutting here initially. You want to start cutting up here initially because as you work your way back you're going to start angling more. So I'm going to start up here-ish and then work my way backwards to where I'm going to start really have that. Uh, angle start. So anyway, as you cut, you cut, rotate, cut, rotate, cut, rotate. So basically you've made a ring of cuts all the way around. And if you, as you work, focus on doing that same thing over and over until you complete a ring essentially, you'll keep pretty good symmetry. And you can correct a little bit more as you go along when you need to, but pretty good way to make sure that you're going to get a nice round top when this is all said and done. And then it'll spin better. Now if you're feeling like getting through the wood a little quicker, you can go to like a, a what do you call it, like a scissor cut or a chest lever cut, whatever you want to call it. So you know, you bring your knife up to your chest and the wood piece up to your chest and you can hog off the wood quite a bit faster that way because you can get a lot more leverage. Doing the same thing here, just pretty much cut and rotate and try to do about the same amount of wood, same angle as you go along, and it'll help you stay round. And as you rotate, if you focus on the, the peaks and cut those off essentially as you go around, it makes for an easier cut rather than if you go to the flats, try to make your cuts on the flats, it's just harder to get your knife to bite. And um, then you're also working towards a smoother and smoother finish. So now we're looking to see how round things are. We're not bad, and the pith is gonna be a little bit off center, but that might actually be okay, because the center is probably about right here. Um, but that means that there's good solid wood there because sometimes even the pith in this kind of wood can be a little bit soft. So it's okay if it's a little bit off. You can work with that. And when you get to the point of making the tip here, you don't want to make it super pointy and sharp because 
the minute you plop it down to spin it, it's just going to bend that tip over. Um, so you want your tip to be pretty blunt. Um, but you do want to make sure it's got a little bit of a, you know, a peak so that it, it does spin on that rather than spinning on a round or something like that. We're going to give that a shot. We're going to make that be our, our shape. So if we compare, this one's a little bit more angular, but we're going to give this a shot. Or even this one is probably got a little bit more of a point to it. But anyway, we're going to see what happens. If we need to, we can always come back and put more of a point as we move up. Um, so then the next thing is to kind of figure out how much thickness do you want to leave here before you start making carving down to where the handle is going to be. You don't really have to mark this out necessarily, but uh, I'm going to just for the sake of showing it. But I'm going to go about here. I'm just thinking aesthetically that's going to make a top that's going to look kind of cool, or at least have nice proportions. I'm still wet there, it won't mark. It also helped me keep a pretty even line as I work around. So um, anyway, now I'm not going to worry too much about what this looks like yet, because if it dries a little bit more, I'll get cleaner cuts on it uh, when I come back, because it's still really wet. So I'm not going to focus on cleaning this up yet, this this section right here, but I will come back to that. So for now, I'm going to focus on creating a stop cut here where this line is to start cutting down to where the handle's going to be. And when you first initiate this stop cut, don't go crazy and hog off a bunch of wood because it's easy to go through it. It'd be really easy to just cut through. So when you start your stop cuts, go small until you get established. Then you can start taking off a little bit more wood. It's been a little bit since I've stropped my knife, so let's do that now. That helped. A little bit of stropping. Never hurts. Now if you wanted, and you were feeling like you had really good control with the saw, you could probably cut down with the saw here um, and use that as your stop line, but I find that trickier, and I don't mind taking my time uh, doing these cuts to get down to the thickness of the handle. We're starting to look rather mushroomy here, and um, we're getting down close to the thickness that I want the handle to be at the base here. Uh, generally, you want to be, you know, no smaller than a quarter inch, because um, anything smaller than that is hard to hang on to. I think on this one, we're going to do something kind of like I did on this bigger one, where the handle flares a little bit at the top. So we're going to do something kind of like that, um, but I want to get a little thinner just a little bit and a little bit more consistent around the base here before we start working towards the top. So at this point I'm just looking for high spots and spots that are obviously out around. Um, you know you're not you're not going to get it perfect at least it'd be really tough to get it perfect uh, when you're whittling. I'm sure if you spent enough time really slowly painstakingly chipping away you would get to what was really really close but it doesn't doesn't really have to be and aesthetically I think there's nothing wrong with it looking like you whittled it and you can see some of the facets and stuff like that but to each his own you can take it as far as you want now the other thing I'm doing here is this surface is sometimes a little bit messed up because of the way you come at it with the stop cuts. So I'm also kind of cleaning that up at this point. Just pushing and cutting straight across like across the grain just to clean it up a bit so it looks smooth. It's easier to clean that up now when it is still attached to this longer piece rather than trying to come back and clean that up once you've separated it. All right, now I want to clean this up 
a little bit uh, work on making sure that this is consistent or at least a little bit more consistent around this section right here so I'm going to try to find the lowest spot which is about right here and then I'm going to try to match that and go around and just make small cuts to kind of go for some symmetry here got this pretty much where I want it to be except I want to chamfer this edge right here I don't want this to be sharp so I'm just going to go around and make some small cuts all right now I think I can start bringing this down to make the, the to finish up the handle and since I got a pretty short little top here we don't want a super long handle to make it really tippy um, so I think I'm gonna make the handle end probably before this um, knot right here uh, which will help so that I don't have to work on that and also it's probably a pretty good length so I'm gonna hog off a bunch of wood here to get down to the thickness that I want it to be up at the top here So I think my handle's gonna be about that long. And I'm gonna make a line here, a stop cut essentially. All right, so we are getting right down to the point where this is gonna separate off. So before we let that happen, now is the time to go back and make any finishing cuts that you wanna make. Um, do any rounding that isn't done yet to kind of even things out. Make sure your tip is decent. But I'm fairly happy with how that's looking. It's not perfect, but good enough. So I'm going to continue to separate here. And I've got a pretty stubby little handle on here. Um, some people would prefer a bit longer. Um, but I think for the purposes of the proportions of this, I think that's kind of a nice little shape. So we'll see how it works out when she's done. Be very careful as you're making these cuts. You're likely at any point to go through and break this off. So be sure that you have the clearance that you need. There we go. Let's see if she spins. Hmm, so it turns out this much of a, that kind of flare, while it looks fun, makes it hard to get her started. But we got her. So I'm actually gonna round these down just a little, see if that helps. Yeah, that helped. Give it a little more flat spot. Oops. Give it a little more of a flat spot to hold on to there. So, there she is. Not very big, but kind of fun and cute. Ooh, that was a good one. So anyway, you can experiment. It's not hard. The idea is pretty simple once you get going. Um, and you can change your style. You can make acorn. You can make it. That one could use a little balancing. But my big one spins pretty well. And my little one likes to spin upside down sometimes. <laughs> upside down. So anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Sack Whittling. I hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you learned something fun to do. Go whittle the top. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.